Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In our previous video, we studied about the various aspects of monetary policies, the different types of monetary policies. And as I promised, this video shall focus on the various tools that the central bank tends to use to keep the credit under control. This video is important mainly for those students who are from the Indian boards as in um, the CBSC board, ISC board and HSC board. If you are a student who is from the Cambridge or Oxford boards or the IB boards, um, there are a lot of things that may not be applicable to your syllabus. So you could skip through the segments which are not there in your syllabus. All right. So without wasting any time further, let's get started. Now, when we talk about the tools of monetary policy, we have basically two major categories of tools that the central bank uses. One such category is the quantitative tools and the other one is called as the qualitative tools or the selective tools of credit control. Now, when we talk about quantitative tools, as the name indicates, we have the quantity word here. So it is mainly focused on the volume of the credit created in the economy. Qualitative, on the other hand, are more traditional methods that the central bank uses and they generally tend to regulate the flow of the credit. So when I say flow of the credit, it means where the central bank wants this credit to go, in which sector. Every annual budget is focused upon a certain sector in the economy. Say for example, uh, maybe transport and communication or probably industrialization or probably uh, giving support to export oriented units. So this flow of credit is basically making those sectors the priority as far as loaning out funds is concerned. When we talk about quantitative tools of monetary policy, these are the tools the central bank generally uses. We call them as bank rate, OMO or open market operations the reserve ratio and the repo rate. Qualitative tools, on the other hand, would include margin requirements, moral suasion, credit rationing and issue of directives. Now let's take a look at the bank rate and repo rate. Now bank rate is also called as the discount rate and it is the rate at which central bank is lending money to commercial banks. When the central bank lends to commercial bank for a long term time period, that rate is called as the bank rate. Whereas when it is lending for a short term purpose, it is called as the repo rate or the repurchase rate. Let us see how bank rate is implemented or used to control credit. So when we talk about inflation, we know that it is a period where economy is already heated and we need to bring down the aggregate demand. For that, what central bank would do is it would increase the bank rate or the discount rate. Now the moment bank rate is raised, if commercial banks are still willing to borrow from the central bank, their borrowing cost would just go up. They'll have to pay a higher rate of interest to the central bank and since the borrowing is a little expensive now commercial banks may not be willing to take the amount that they were willing to from the central bank this would result in less liquidity for the commercial banks to lend out and hence it would again result in low credit creation since a lot of individuals and businesses are not borrowing from the commercial banks now due to high rate of interest, the aggregate demand in the economy would tend to curb and hence the inflation could be taken care of. On the flip side, if there is a recession in the economy, there is a slowdown in the economy, the central bank would want to increase the aggregate demand and for that it would bring down the bank rate or the discount rate. Now when the discount rate goes down, borrowings by the commercial banks would become cheaper and that would make commercial banks borrow more. In this scenario, commercial banks would have more liquidity available with them to loan out to businesses and individuals. That would increase the credit creation and hence we will see a lot of spending happening in the economy causing the aggregate demand to increase. So this policy here 
is basically the contractionary monetary policy and this policy implemented here is basically the expansionary monetary policy in action. The next is the open market operations or OMO. Now under open market operations, the central bank would either buy or sell bonds, treasury bills or in short we could say government securities. During an inflation as we've studied, the central bank is focusing to bring down the aggregate demand. So the central bank would be willing to sell the bonds or government treasuries. Now once the central bank is selling bonds and uh, treasury bills to people, it will suck up all the money from these banks and individuals. So central bank is giving the bonds and in return it is taking all the money. So that leaves these banks and people with less money either to spend if it's from the individual perspective or lend if it's from the bank's perspective. And the overall impact would be a reduction in aggregate demand causing the aggregate demand curve to shift to the left. In a recession scenario, the agenda here is to increase aggregate demand because there's a slowdown in the economy. So the central bank will buy bonds from the banks so when the central bank is buying these bonds and treasury bills from the commercial banks, it would fuel in more liquidity, more money available with the banks and individuals. With more liquidity, the banks would now be able to lend more and individuals and businesses would be able to spend more and thereby increasing the aggregate demand. Next one is called variable reserve ratios. Now there are two types of variable reserve ratios. One is the cash reserve ratio which we generally write as CRR and the other one is called statutory liquidity ratio. It is called as SLR. Now what is CRR? CRR is basically the minimum percentage of net demand deposits and time deposits that are held with the central bank. That means all commercial banks are required to hold this much minimum percentage of their total time and demand deposits with the central bank. SLR, statutory liquidity ratio, refers to a minimum percentage of net time deposits and demand deposits that are held by the commercial banks with themselves. Now the main purpose of holding this money is to ensure that all the withdrawal requests that are made by the customers of the commercial banks, they are fulfilled in time. Now let's see how variable reserve ratios are implemented. So during inflation, since the agenda is to bring down the aggregate demand, variable reserve ratios are raised. Now the moment variable reserve ratios are raised, these percentages would simply go up and that would reduce the availability of commercial banks to lend out funds. Why is that happening? Because they are left with less liquidity with them. And since there are fewer loans that are being given out to people or businesses, aggregate demand would come down. On the other hand, during a recession, the agenda is to bring down the aggregate demand. So to do that, the variable reserve ratios are slashed down. That will increase the ability of commercial banks to loan out funds. Why? because there is now an increased liquidity available with the commercial banks. This would raise the aggregate demand since people will have a lot of funds available with them to spend. Margin requirements is one such tool which is very often used by the central bank. Now what is a margin requirement? It's basically the difference between the loan amount and the market value of the security that is offered to procure this loan. So let us say there is a Mr. Ray who is willing to keep his gold as a security of say $10,000 which is the market value of this particular gold. Now if the central bank has fixed the margin requirement at 20%, so this 20% which is equivalent to 2000 would be reduced and only $8,000 would be available as loan for Mr. Ray. Now if this margin requirement is increased by say 30%, so 
So out of this $10,000, which was the market value of this gold, Mr. Ray would end up getting only $7,000 as his loan amount. So we can see that the moment um, the margin requirement is increased from 20 to 30%, the loan amount reduced by $1,000. So that's what generally the central bank would do. So during inflation, the margin requirements are raised due to which less amount of loan is available for the individual, bringing down his expenditures or his ability to spend and hence the aggregate demand falls. During recession, it will be completely opposite. So margin requirements would be slashed down so that more loan amount would be available for an individual, increasing his ability to spend and hence the aggregate demand in the economy could be increased. The other selective tools that the central bank uses, as we studied in the first slide, they are more traditional in nature. So the central bank could issue directives or persuade the commercial banks to give out loans at a specific interest rate to specific type of industries or businesses or individuals. So moral suasion is basically persuading. The issue of directives are more, more strict form of giving orders to the commercial banks so that loans could be given out for specific purposes and people and businesses. The last in this segment is called as credit rationing. So under credit rationing, basically the two things that the central bank would tweak are the down payments that people would have to make when they borrow money and the tenure of the loan. So if the central bank is aiming to bring down the aggregate demand, it could use a combination of an increase in down payment and an increase in tenure or it could just tweak either of the one, maybe just an increase in down payment and no change in the tenure or probably there'd be a, uh, an increase in the tenure and absolutely no change in the down payment. So all the people who are not okay with a high down payment are siphoned out Likewise, all those people who are not okay with an increased tenure would again reject the loan. And hence, the spendings in the economy could be curbed and the aggregate demand could be brought down. And similarly, when there is a recession, either the down payment could be slashed down or the tenure could be slashed down or a combination of both. Children, if you haven't still subscribed to my channel, the moment I say subscribe, you would see the subscribe button glowing in different rainbow colors. If you see that and if you do like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you again in another video with another topic. Bye now. Take care.